We know that, that you know, oft times the, the people who control the new economy, the new opportunities are, you know, the ones who are creative startups. And we have some creative startups here to be sure. My name is Tim Miller and I'm the president and CEO of Greenlight Motors. I founded the company. Uh, our goal is to uh, develop a vehicle that gives people the safety and the comfort of a regular car that they drive every day. But on top of that, we give them 100 mile per gallon efficiency, the ability to take the express lane even when they're driving alone, and it's very easy to park. What we have here is a three-wheeled vehicle that drives like a motorcycle. It leans smoothly into the turns. It's a two-person vehicle. You'll be fully enclosed. What you're seeing here is just the roll bars in the vehicle, but you'll be fully enclosed. Greenlight Motors is one of many companies that are working on different vehicles to attack different challenges in the whole transportation uh, situation, or looking for solutions for transportation. Ours is a vehicle that's really designed for people in a metropolitan area that need to be able to commute significant distances. Other vehicles are aiming for smaller, uh, sort of downtown urban applications. Uh, some of them are low-speed vehicles. Other vehicles are going for very high performance or uh, electric trucks and things. So we are filling a specific application within that whole need for various vehicle solutions. This is a wonderful uh, time in which uh, the ma major automobile manufacturers are having competition now in this new space of uh, electric vehicles. Is it a one-to-one -one, um, competition between a Nissan and the neighborhood electric vehicle? No. But could that neighborhood electric vehicle deal with most of your trips? Yes. Americans are willing to have large cars and short vacations, and our friends over in Europe uh, require long vacations and are willing to put up with small cars. I don't know who's smarter or not. I love the comfort of a, of a big car, but I know that I don't need it most of the time, and I, for one, would opt for a longer vacation. <laughs> what you see behind me here is our third generation prototype, and the prototype demonstrates uh, an electric drive train as well as a gas drive train, and it also demonstrates our vehicle, which drives like a motorcycle, so it leans smoothly and easily into the turns, but then when you come to a stop, the vehicle will automatically stand itself up and hold you in a safe, secure position. And then when you drive away again, you're back to smooth, easy leaning like a motorcycle. Our plan is to make this vehicle give you 100 mile per gallon efficiency. The vehicle will be able to go up, up to or cruising at 85 miles per hour. Right now the prototype is a 400cc gas engine plus an electric motor. And they can run at the same time, or you can run on electric only, or you can run on gas only. So it's a hybrid system that takes advantage of the benefits of each drive system. Someday we would like to do an all-electric version, uh, but today's battery prices are a little bit too high for people to get the kinds of, kind of range they want and still have an affordable vehicle. You can charge the battery at home through your normal uh, outlet and it'll take four to six hours to charge at home. But again, since our vehicle is a hybrid, you can always go whenever you want to go because you have the gas engine on board. The battery technology that we plan to use is a lithium iron phosphate battery. It's a very high uh, density of, of both power and, uh, and energy. It's a blast to drive this vehicle because uh, you really get the feeling of uh, a free, uh, leaning, fun uh, driving experience. Very different from driving a car, but you're still fully enclosed and safe as if you were in a car. Green Science Oregon is brought to you by Portland State University. Solutions for a Sustainable Oregon. Last year, Portland General Electric and the state of Oregon were selected as strategic participants in the largest electric vehicle project in U.S. history. And this project is headed up by an Arizona-based company called Ecotality. And Ecotality has been given a Department of Energy grant for nearly $100 million. And the goal of that project is to bring electric vehicle infrastructure and electric vehicles to six states and Washington, D.C. We're going to be putting out over 2,000 electric vehicle charging stations in Oregon in the next year. 900 of those are going to be in people's homes and the rest are going to be out publicly available. We are gathering data on a, on a weekly basis, sending it to Idaho National Laboratory on uh, how uh, state of charge, how often people are charging, where they're charging, 
and, and then recording it over time too to see how people just entering the market may behave in terms of their charging experience and how they may change over time as they get more comfortable with the technology. All that data for, from all those units is reported to Idaho National Laboratory. Uh, the, the individual information on, on the, the subscribers is scrubbed, uh, and, and it's, uh, but, but we uh, provide a huge amount of information that will be available to uh, city planners or people who are interested in putting in charging infrastructure across the United States. It'll be available to people manufacturing batteries, manufacturing the cars, and in general, uh, helping to inform the industry as to what the next steps will be. Uh, PSU and U of O are on our advisory team here locally and are helping us with, uh, with the, um, the rollout of, uh, of EV infrastructure. The role that Portland State has in, in both the EV project and, and the larger uh, quest for for clean transportation it, at the moment may be less clinical or academic than it is in simply convening uh, the opportunities to connect the marketplace, you know, the, the consumers and fleet operators with the supply side, with the manufacturers. The EV project uh, is very closely tied to the rollout of the Nissan LEAF. What we have here today is the Nissan LEAF. It's really the world's first affordable zero emission car. I mean, our story is really pretty simple. Zero gas, zero oil, zero two, CO2, zero tailpipe. So we're going to go reverse. So it says over and up. Over and up. So backup camera lights up. We got green, yellow, and red. Oh. So you got a lot of room. Keep I've going. got lots of room. You got lots of room. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay so then now over and down. Over and down. You're in drive. Oregon is one of our five launch states that we begin deliveries in December. We're going to be nationwide by the end of 2011, but Oregonians get the chance to drive zero emission beginning in a couple of months. Power meters, so there's 80 kilowatt motor on board, so under full acceleration you light it all up and then regenerative braking going the other way. Nearby charging stations will automatically be populated. So right now the two that PGE put in are here in the map, so they're already there. And Nissan didn't stop at just making a zero emission car. We also thought about fabrics and materials and overall recyclability. Uh, inside, everything you see, fabric materials, made out of recycled water bottles. One of the most important things about the Nissan LEAF is it's really affordable. I mean, after you look at our list price, the tax credits, the tax credits here in Oregon for purchase or lease, you're under $24,000. So very affordable to use. And then you look at the cost of gasoline versus electricity. You spend about 13 cents a mile right now to drive around in your gas car. This one, less than two. If you're part of the EV project, we will include a free installation of a charging station in your home along with that LEAF. These are our banded birds. These are the cars where, uh, that, where we're gathering data with the permission of, the, of the, uh, the car owner, both in their garage, through their home uh, charging unit, and out in the public, wherever they're going and hooking up with a Blink uh, network charging station. It would be my fondest hope that, that we could become a center, in fact, the center of what some people call sustainable mobility. The, the design and strategies that help us move people and goods in more sustainable ways that don't damage the environment, don't damage the pocketbook, and still get the job done. That's a great promise, that's a great aspiration for us in the Northwest, and I hope that we can own that space.